listening to Full Circle Weekly News. These articles are compiled by Eric the Unready, and I'm your host, Moss Bliss. This is episode 358, covering week 11, March 11th to 17th, 2024. Linus Torvalds presented kernel version 6.8. Notable changes include the XE driver for Intel GPUs, the protection mode for block devices with mounted file systems, the deadline server test scheduler mechanism, automatic optimization of merging identical memory pages, the first driver in the Rust language, list mount and stat mount system calls, removal of BP filter and slab mechanism guest MFD in KVM, data access profiling. TENV 1.2.0 has been published. TENV is a console manager for managing versions of the Terraform, TerraGrunt, and OpenTofu platforms used to manage external resources and automate the maintenance of infrastructure in accordance with the infrastructure as code model. TENV is written in Go, does not require additional dependencies, and can be run on any operating system. The code is distributed under the Apache 2.0 license. OpenSSH 9.7 has been published, an open implementation of a client and server for working under the SSH 2.0 and SFTP protocols. The team has begun to anticipate the deprecation of DSA-based keys. OpenSSH 9.7 provides an option to disable DSA at compile time, but the default build with DSA support is retained for now. The release offers a new type of timeout in SSH and SSHD, enabled by specifying the value global in the channel timeout directive. OpenSSH now monitors all open channels and closes them if there is no traffic on them for a specified period of time. There is also a significant improvement in compatibility with the PuTTY project. The OpenAI project has published a debugger called Transformer Debugger. It is designed to analyze the activation of structures and machine learning language models when processing certain data. Transformer Debugger supports step-by-step navigation through model output, tracing, and interception of specific activity. In general, it allows you to understand why a language model displays one token instead of another in response to a certain request, or why the model pays more attention to certain tokens in a request. The code is written in Python and is distributed under the MIT license. GTK 4.14.0 has been published. GTK 4 is being developed to provide application developers with a stable and supported API for several years without the fear of having to rewrite applications every six months due to API changes in the next GTK branch. The GTK 5 branch will include changes that break compatibility at the API level related to deprecating some widgets, such as the old file selection dialog, the possibility of ending support for the X11 protocol in the GTK 5 branch, and being able to work with only using the Wayland protocol, is also being discussed. OBS Studio 30.1 has been released. The code is written in C and C++ and distributed under the GPLv2 license. Builds are created for Linux as Flatpak, Windows, and Mac OS. OBS Studio is a portable version of the Open Broadcaster software not tied to the Windows platform, and it supports OpenGL and is extensible through plugins. Its modular architecture implies the separation of the interface and the core of the program. It supports transcoding of source streams, video capture during games, and streaming to PeerTube, Twitch, Facebook Gaming, YouTube, Daily Motion, and other services. Services. You can use hardware acceleration mechanisms. Support is provided for compositing with scene construction based on arbitrary video streams, data from web cameras, video capture cards, images, text, the contents of application windows, or the entire screen. During broadcasting, you can switch between several predefined scenes. The program also provides tools for audio mixing, filtering using VST plugins, volume equalization, and noise reduction. Linus Torvalds has approved a request to remove the old NTFS file system driver from the Linux kernel. Starting with kernel 5.15, the kernel includes the new NTFS 3 driver, developed and maintained by Paragon Software. The old driver has not been updated for many years, is in a deplorable state, and can only work in read mode. The NTFS 3 driver supports write mode and all the features of the current version of NTFS 3.1, including extended file attributes, access lists, data compression mode, effective work with empty spaces in files, and replay changes from the log to restore integrity after failures. Removing the old driver should not affect distributions. Debian does not build or use NTFS drivers from the kernel at all, but offers an NTFS-3G implementation in user space. Arch Linux uses the new NTFS3 driver by default. 
Vintage computer enthusiasts have published the Project PDP-10, aimed at creating a working reconstruction of the DEC PDP-10 KA-10 mainframe from 1968. A new control panel housing was manufactured for the device equipped with 124 lamp indicators and 74 switches. The computing components and software environment are recreated using a Raspberry Pi 5 board with Raspberry Pi OS and the SIMH toolkit, which supports full PDP-10 simulation, including reproducing known errors. The emulator can run the TOPS 10 multitasking and multi-user operating system, which was originally shipped on PDP-10 mainframes. The alternative ITS operating system is also an option. Over 400 historical applications recovered from MIT tape archives are available to run on ITS. The code for the components used by the project and the script for automating the installation are published on GitHub. To launch ITS, assembly tools developed by enthusiasts were used. New bootable builds of Void Linux have been generated. Void is an independent project that does not use the developments of other distributions. Updating builds does not bring functional changes and their use only makes sense for new installations. Builds are available in versions based on glibc and muscle system libraries. Live images with the XSCE desktop and a basic console have been prepared for x86-64, i686, armv6l, armv7l, and arch64 platforms. Arm builds support BeagleBone, BeagleBone Black, Cube Board 2, Odroid U2 and U3, and Raspberry Pi boards. The distribution uses the Runit system manager. To manage packages, they're using their own XBPS package manager and XBPS-SRC package build system. XBPS allows you to install, uninstall, and update applications. Detect shared library incompatibilities and manage dependencies. You can use Muscle as a standard library instead of glibc. Systems developed by Void are distributed under the BSD license. MineClonia 0.97 has been released, a fork of MineClone 2 and made on the Mine Test Engine. At the moment, the game has more features than MineClone 2, but at the same time, in-game music and hamburgers were deliberately removed. The project code is written in Lua and is distributed under the GPL v3 license. Among the changes of the new version are the addition of a level cost on the anvil, the implementation of a fishing rod, and the addition of the ability to fish, as well as fixing some bugs. Tile OS 1.0 T-Rex is now available, built on Debian and offering a tiled window manager. Tile OS pursues the same goals as the Ubuntu Sway Remix distribution and is aimed at both experienced Linux users and beginners who want to try out a tiled window manager environment without spending a lot of time setting them up. Tile OS is much more open to changes and customization and is free of any potential copyright issues. Builds for the AMD 64 architecture have been prepared for download. ARM 64, in particular Raspberry Pi boards, are in the works. The source code is available on GitLab. The GNOME project has published LiveAd Weta 1.5, which includes a set of components for user interface styling that follows the GNOME human interface guidelines. The library includes ready-made widgets and objects for building applications that can be adaptively adjusted to screens of any size. The library code is written in C and is distributed in the LGPL 2.1 Plus license. The LiveAd Weta library is used in conjunction with GTK4 and includes components of the Adweta theme. The main change in LiveAd Weta 1.5 was the reworking of adaptive widgets to create dialog boxes that adjust to the size of the visible area. New dialogs are rendered client-side inside existing windows and cannot extend beyond the parent window. This approach simplifies the creation of universal dialogs that can be combined with interfaces for mobile and desktop systems and also provides additional options for managing dialogs. Open Enterprise Linux Association introduced kernel-LTS project, where it will provide additional support for some outdated LTS branched kernels after they are no longer officially supported. The first kernel to receive additional support will be the 4.14 branch, published in November 2017 and supported for six years. The code kernel development team stopped maintaining this branch in January 2024. Open ELA has resumed maintenance and updates for this kernel at least until December 2024. Following the final release of Linux kernel 4.14.336, the Open ELA team has already released extended updates 4.14337 Open ELA, 4.14.338 Open ELA, and 4.14.339 Open ELA. The Open ELA repository takes the place of the git.centos.org repository. WebKit GTK 2.44.0, a port of the WebKit browser engine for the GTK platform, has been announced. WebKit GTK allows you to use all the features of WebKit through a GNOME-oriented programming interface and can be used to integrate web content processing tools into any application. Focus is on the GNOME web browser.
You've been listening to Full Circle Weekly News. For more details, see the next issue of the magazine at fullcirclemagazine.org or check the links in the show notes. You can contact me at bardmoss at pm.me. I'll see you next week.